Welcome to the Prophecy Club. If you've been listening to the Prophecy Club, here's a couple of things you know. (laughs) One is you know that I think telling the truth is more important than not offending you. In other words, and I think it has to be this way for preachers and especially for prophecy teachers, especially for these watchmen that must blow the trumpet, we must be willing to offend, okay? Now, I'm not trying to offend you here. I'm trying to say I'm willing to. There's a big difference. I don't want to. I want to tell you the truth. But nevertheless, the chips sometimes have to fall where they may, and so sometimes if the shoe fits, we just have to wear it. Now, today, pleasantly, I am not going to have to do that, but I'm trying to say that that is more important to me to tell you the truth than it is to just tell you what you want to hear. Now, in many cases, a lot of husbands would take great joy and pleasure in criticizing their wives. Most husbands don't think their wives are as good as them, and they don't give them the opportunity. But in this case, I think Leslie's earned the right for me to say about her what I'm now about to say about her, and no, she doesn't know I'm about to say this. But the truth is, she is a prophet. Truth is, she doesn't miss. Truth is, she doesn't try to get any glory. As a matter of fact, she tries to run from the job. But I was just telling her today, just walked in to the room, and I said, honey, I said, I have to tell you that I think this is the best thing you've ever done. I watch you listening to all of these people preach, these preachers, I see all of the research you're doing, and I have to say it would cross my eyes. It would make my head spin. I just could not listen and research and do the things that you've done to put this together. And I have to say, I think that this is one of the most important things that you can get from the Prophecy Club. 21 years, 153 speakers, some 320 DVDs, and I'm telling you, this set of 10, now maybe 11, DVDs is so important. Can I? Did I emphasize that? It's so important that you get. It is far more important that you have this DVD set than it is you have an extra $180 in your bank account. I mean, I, honestly, I'm, either you believe I'm telling you the truth or you think I'm going to lie to you. Now, as many times as I've said things direct, let it finally come to some good. I want you to believe what I'm trying to say. I'm saying you must call. You must. You. I mean, your soul depends on you knowing this information. Oh, Stan, all I got to do is say the prayer and follow Jesus. Yes, but that's not so easy to do, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, the tricks and traps of the devil out there are polished, and he is good at what he does, and it sounds very good. If you don't have a prophet that can see it, that'll point it out, just like Second Chronicles twenty twenty says, believe God's prophets, and so shall you prosper. So you better be believing his prophets. And I'm telling you, she's earned the right for me to say this is really, really some good stuff. Now, here's what we're going to do today. First of all, I'm going to give you the quick little intro on what the whole 10 DVD set air in the church is over. Then I'm going to continue playing the audio of the DVD called Chris Lum. Now, this, of all the ones I've heard so far, she's not done making them all, but of all I've heard, I think this is the most destructive to a nation, to a society. You can not worship other gods and expect your society, if you're a Christian society, to continue. Okay, first of all, the set. Error in the church. Right now, we expected 10 DVDs, but (laughs) it looks like it's going to be more like 11 and possibly 12. But we're guaranteeing you 10 DVDs valued at $300 on a pre-order gift offer of $180. Topics are mysticism, new age in the Christian church. And by the way, each one of these is roughly two to two and a half hours. Most of them two and a half hours. One of them is even over two and a half hours. Two. Kundalini Spirit Warning. Three, Reformation Church or Kingdom Now Theology. Four, Chris Lom, we're about to hear from. Seeker Friendly, Seeker Sensitive. Emergent Church Postmodernism. G12 Vision. Tazy Worship. Tangible Kingdom Movement. False Christ. Hyper Grace Movement. Yoga in the Church. And 
What else is wrong? And there's a long list of what else for the last DVD. Strongly encourage you. Go to prophecyclub.com, place your gift offer of $180, get the air in the church gift offer, get it, get it, get it. I'm telling you, get it. It is really, really, really good. Look, <laughs> you know, uh, it's flat blowing my lid off. I'm, I'm telling you, it's rolling my socks down right around my ankles. I'm, I'm, I did not know. I did not know that this was going on out there. I, I didn't understand it. And to tell you the truth, if I didn't have a prophet pointing it out to me, I still wouldn't see it. So, you know, if I'm in the ministry, I'm a watchman, and I didn't see it. I didn't understand it, and I wouldn't dig it out. I know you hadn't. So that's the reason I'm telling you guys, you have to get error in the church, the gift offer, pre-order gift offer, $180 now, today. She's going to be talking about Chris Lom. I call it the nation killer. Why? Because Exodus 20, verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You want to know what kills a nation faster than anything? Abortion. No. Same-sex marriages. Homosexuality. No, 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 no to none of those. <laughs> the answer is worshiping other gods. That's what Chris Islam is. It combines the gods of Christianity and Islam. You want to make God mad, you bring other gods into the church, and that's what they're doing, and that's what she's about to tell you about. Chris Islam, the nation killer, by Prophet Leslie Johnson. Now I understand what that means, but at that time I accepted him simply as the Lord of Macaroni. One day the pastor came to me and said, how are you? I answered, I know that's not right, but, you know. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. No. Praise be to God. The pastor was very angry. He said, no, brother, no more. Alhamdulillah. Your God has changed from Allah to God, using the tribal name. You have to express your thanksgiving to God as a Christian. And we have our own expression of thanksgiving to God. He ordered me, the pastor ordered this man to say, praise the Lord and praise to God. My question was, why wasn't the pastor asking him to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? That's what I really want to know. The true Lord and Savior. If he's calling out to Isa, that pastor should realize he's not calling out to Jesus Christ, right? He asked me to not use the term Allah because Allah is evil. Allah is the devil. Allah is the black stone. Allah is an idol. That was the first time I had heard anyone say that Allah is an idol or evil. I was shocked. When I do my spiritual duties, I think I am doing them for Allah. He is the one who created the universe. See, he hasn't accepted Jesus. Has he? Sustains the universe and judges the universe. I couldn't in my mind imagine that Allah is an idol or evil. After some time, I had the chance to go to a Bible college. While I studied there, I learned the difference between the supracultural substance of the Word of God and the cultural form that expresses it. Then my question was answered, and I understood that God really does love everyone. God opened my eyes to understand that all cultures are equal in His eyes. It is not holy context. It's only holy text. So he's believing still in the Quran. He's believing in the Bible, too, at the same time, isn't he? Okay, so he's trying to combine the two, still believing that Allah is the true creator of the universe, still believing that Isa is the true Jesus. And we can see that that's not the truth. I put, this man might as well continue to call him Lord of the Macaroni because he still didn't have the true Jesus in his heart. The devil is a deceive, deceiver, and he will do miracles. You understand that, right? Yeah, yeah. The devil comes in to still kill and destroy, but he also comes in to do miracles so that you'll believe the lie. Yeah. Just because the pastor was telling this man to not say Allah still didn't mean that he had accepted Jehovah God or Jesus. Accepting Jesus as Lord, the Messiah, the King of the Kings, and the Lord of Lords, and Jehovah God is not a cultural thing, is it? No, oh, it's not a cultural thing, but yet he's the, he says that he went to Bible college and he thought that that's what now he sees. His eyes were open. He sees it's just a cultural difference. No, it's not a cultural difference, okay? It's a God difference. It's a false God and a true God difference. It is a spiritual thing. Obviously, this man still did not have his spiritual eyes open nor drawn by the Holy Spirit to accept Jesus Christ as Lord over his life. 
We're going to see a little video clip about Isa in the Quran. Why would I elevate Jesus above all other prophets? If the word of Allah elevates someone, who are we to neglect that or to not acknowledge this? We know that he is mentioned countless times in the Quran. That alone elevates him and makes him great. He is not one who can be found at a shrine or a tomb. The Quran attests, the Hadith will attest that Isa al-Masih is alive, is the only prophet we know of that was elevated, that was taken up to be with Allah. And we know that he will be coming back. This is clearly taught. So he is alive. That elevates him to a very special prominent place. He is also unique in the sense that he is the only prophet who does not have a human father. Allah's intervention has placed the person of Jesus in a totally separate category. He is different and that elevates him. Furthermore, we learn from the khutbah, the preaching of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and it is abundantly clear in the hadith that Isa al-Masih is the only one whom Satan at his birth did not touch with his two fingers. All human beings without exception have the touch of the enemy of Allah and this accounts for their problems in this life. But we are told that one exception only exists. It is Isa al-Masih. He is the only one who, of whom this is said that he is sinless from birth. It calls him while he is even in his, uh, in his mother's womb. It says of him, this holy child. This is the testimony of the Quran. He is unique in this sense. Can you see where they're headed? I mean, here, this Muslim, obviously, he's giving a lesson for people just go on the website to listen that Jesus is in his Quran. That he was um, the only one that was elevated up. Okay? Did you hear him saying, peace be to Allah? You know, they've got to say that kind of a thing. If we don't know our word, if we don't fellowship with one another, if we don't come together in a God-fearing, Bible-believing church that is desiring to give you truth, then you can be led astray very easily. The scriptures tell us in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. You understand that if they come together and they're worshiping the same, their, their God in the same same building, then that's worshiping idols to Christians. That is tainting our ground, tainting our holy ground. Now we're going to talk about Chrislam that's in the churches, show you some of the churches that have allowed Chrislam to come into their church. Church leader Brian teaches Chrislam. This was on March 2014. He says, do you know, take it all the way back into the Old Testament and the Muslim and you, we actually serve the same God, Allah to a Muslim, to us, Abba, Father, God. And of course, through history, those views have changed greatly. But let's make sure that we view God through the eyes of Jesus, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the beauty of a Savior, the loving, open, inclusive arms of a loving God. Here he's telling this huge congregation, just open your arms, just invite everybody in. Just invite all these other faiths in. Just invite all these other gods into our place. That's what he is saying here. And here, this is a pastor, Brian, very well known across the globe, right? Yeah. And he is saying that this is what we're supposed to do, church. 
So if this is a man of God that's staying up there and all these people are following him, listening to him, believing him, what do you think they're going to say? Well, we have to, we have to do this. We have to open our arms. We have to say, Chrislam, it's okay. Come on in. We're going to worship together because we have the same God. He just declared that Allah and Jehovah God are the same God. It's not the same God. And that way, it will lead out of that, but you'll be purposeful about your leadership, and you'll draw people just like the Lord Jesus always does through the power of the Holy Spirit. So he's using the Holy Spirit. He's using the Trinity to say, you've got to just bring them in, okay? We've got to worship together because we have the same Father God. We're going to see this little video clip of uh, this Pastor Brian and listen to what he has to say. How do you view God in a desert? There's two types of birds. There's vultures and there's hummingbirds. One lives off dead carcasses, rotting meat. The other lives off the beautiful sweet nectar in a particular flower on a particular desert plant. In the same desert, they both find what they're looking for. Do you know, take it all the way back into the Old Testament and the Muslim and you, we actually serve the same God, Allah, to a Muslim. To us, have a Father God. A little scary, don't you think? A little scary. And we have, again, mega churches, big name pastors, people that are following them, not just here in this country, but across the globe. Now, this is um, about the house. This was on June 21st, 2014. Berlin House of the First Church Mosque Synagogue. This was by Stephen Evans, BBC News, and making religious history as Muslims, Jews, and Christians join hands to build a place where they can all worship. Muslims, Jews, and Christians, we're going to come together as one, as it is being called, will be a synagogue, a church, and a mosque under one roof. The design is for a brick building with a tall, square central tower. Probably going to put some of those, what do you call those things on the top of the mosque? Those the the minaret, but also the, where the speakers are at so they can... Okay, that's what they're headed to. Off the courtyard below will be the house of worship for the three faiths, the synagogue, the church, and the mosque. It is to occupy a prominent site in um, Pretoplatz in the, in the heart of Berlin. He said, The location is highly significant, according to one of the three religious leaders involved, Rabbi. From my Jewish point of view, the city where Jewish suffering was planned is now the city where a center is being built monotheistic religions which shaped European culture he told the BBC can they get on we can that there are people within each group who can't is our problem but you'll still have to start somewhere and that's what we are doing the imam involved uh, Sansi sees one as a sign a signal to the world that the great majority of Muslims are peaceful and are not violent it is also, he says, a place where different cultures can learn from each other. And each of the three areas in the house will be the same size, but of a different shape. Architect, the architect had pointed out. All right, now, again, remember what we talked about when we started this segment here, that um, they're saying that they're, that they're a peaceful religion. But remember, it's also saying if you do not allow people to worship right next to you or or if you make any kind of a statement against how they they studied Allah and that they're Muslims then they have the right to put you in their place in other words they have a right to correct you in the way that they think that they need to correct is not the way we maybe as Christians would think that we could correct this rabbi and also the father in other words the priest that came that they're saying they're coming together and the imam, they hold symbolic bricks in their hands while standing at the construction site of the future House of One. And again, this was June 3rd, 2014 in Berlin. The initiative aims to bring together Jews, Christians, and Muslims in one building that will house a synagogue, a church, and a mosque with a common area for exchange and discussion. Again, Chrislam and Church at St. Peter's Church reaches out to wish Muslims a blessed Ramadan with their sign. The Reverend took this step to show support for his Muslims neighbors and the reverend even praises Allah as you can see here this is their sign and it says Allah blesses you our dear Muslim brothers and sisters the sign says uh, blessed Ramadan Ramadan Mubarak uh, to our Muslim sisters and brothers and the intention of the sign was to build a bridge between the Christian community and the Islamic community. We're already in the process of doing that in our community. We have ongoing dialogue with 
various Muslim groups, and we wanted to promote that dialogue. Uh, there is a Christian church which is encouraging people to burn Qurans. We find that extremely offensive, as offensive as if other people would burn the Bible. We also feel that in the ongoing discussions on the mosque at Ground Zero, regardless of how people feel about the position, that there needs to be a feeling of camaraderie and of community with people who are members of our diverse community. And we're trying to promote that by encouraging people to build bridges with others who are different than they are. What do you think our Lord and Savior would say about that sign? If you were to have that sign in front of your church, do you think he'd be pleased? He would not be pleased. He's not pleased. And it is, and it's an abomination. The Lord talks about that he gives signs. Well, we give signs too, right? We give signs as to who we are following, who we believe in. With this as an abomination unto our Lord, I guess really touched me really deep because they made it an outward sign also for the whole world to see that they are opening up their arms for them to, to just welcome the Ramadan in. All right, They're welcoming the things that Muslims do to worship their God and say, Allah blesses you. Why couldn't he have talked about Jesus on there? And that we're peaceful and that we, you know, something different than that. Jesus and the Quran coming to Houston, October 10, 2010. This week in the Memorial Drive, church in Houston, along with Christian communities in Atlanta, Seattle, and Detroit, will, have an, will initiate a series of sermons that have been designed to produce an economical reconciliation between Christianity and Islam. In addition to the sermons, the Sunday School lessons will center on the inspired teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. This is what they were, they're doing. They set up their churches in Houston, Atlanta, Seattle, Detroit. They're all going to do the same lesson, the same thing here, and it's going to center on Muhammad in the Christian church, people. The crowns will be placed in the pews where? Right next to our Holy Bible. The scriptural study called Jesus in the Quran will take place this weekend in a church in Houston. The program began out of the basic Christian commandment to love thy neighbor. You see it? Do you see what's going on here? In 2001, like most Americans, we were pretty awakened to the true Islamic presence in the world and in the United States, said John Stallsmith, the outreach minister of Grace Fellowship who initiated the Jesus in the Quran a few years ago. Jesus says we should love our neighbors. We can't do that without having a relationship with them. Really? Did we not just read that we're not to fellowship with unbelievers? Did we just read what the Word of God says? Are they following what the Word of God says? They're not. So I challenge everyone here to just get into the Word, study the Word, and know what it says so that you're not falling into the trap here and believing that this is okay. Grace. Church, only 30% of Americans have a favorable view of Muslims, according to a Pew Forum poll. At the same time, more than half the country says they know not very much or nothing at all about the Islamic faith. In a time of Quran burning threats and mosque debates, the program has unsurprisingly drawn some criticism. Huh, really? Some fellow Christians say the Quran is an evil book and they should not be working closely with Muslims. Jesus and the Quran's teachers disagree, saying Christian and Muslim relationships are more important than ever. So this grace has opened the doors for Chrislam. This came from the website, or Jesus Quran, and it's a big outpouring of what they're doing. It's a, it's a church, but they're really getting uh, churches across uh, America to come together with them on this. According to a 2009 study conducted by the Pew Research Center, about one in four people on the planet is Muslim. It's time we learn to share the most important aspect of our lives, our faith, with one another in a way that is honoring, loving, and fruitful. The soundtrack from this video is a recording of something, whatever, from the Quran, in which the single and central prayer request is, God, show us the straight way. That's what they're saying. They're saying we've got to study the Quran because it's going to show us the straight way. This is a Christian church, okay? These are some of the most well-known and off-recited verses in the Quran, and we believe it's time to come together in deep discussions of God straightway. So this is what they were studying. Again, this is continued taken from the Grace Fellowship website. Our team shares an intense desire to see peace blossom between Christians and Muslims, and we believe that true peace can only be found in the kingdom of God. 
Our approach to these conversations about faith has its roots in the model of Jesus and his early followers. We build friendships, study the Bible and the Quran together, and ask that God to help us answer the all-important question, who is Jesus and what does he have to do with entering the kingdom of God? Continuing on this, during a training weekend, usually spread across a Friday night and Saturday, we hope to equip Christians and Muslims alike to have these kinds of conversations in a fruitful, honoring way. We focus on three major topics, the kingdom of God and the Bible, our identity within the kingdom, and Islam in the kingdom. Although historically the relationship between Christians and Muslims has often highlighted the difference between our faiths, we are confident that through prayer and patience study both, we can come to a robust, life-giving understanding of Jesus and the kingdom. But again, they're trying to say that Jesus, again, is still is in the Quran, that Isa is our Jesus, and it is not our Jesus. Again, can you see how Christians are going to come against Christians? We're going to have a war between us. Those are saying, you know, and they're going to say that we are hypocrites, that we are hate, you know, hate mongers and all these kinds of things because we're not allowing them to come into the church to worship together. It's opening to not, not only do we see the churches open to paganism, Hinduism has come in, is Islam faith now has come in, right? Believing in Allah has come in. So we have, we have made major strides here in our churches here in America and across the globe for that matter and have made a humongous mess of things because we have not stayed true to the word of God. We have not got our people trained and equipped. We have not gotten them to understand the word. We have not been training them, teaching them, and inspiring them, equipping them, and exhorting them to go about doing the work of the Lord. And that's what we've got to get back to. We're going to get back to the truth here. Well, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com and place your order for Error in the Church. 10 DVDs, 12 topics, value to $300, gift of $180. prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112. Don't put it off. Order today. It's well worth it. You'll be glad you did. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Prophet Leslie will be speaking each Sunday morning through the end of December, making a 10 DVD set called Error in the Church. This will help you to recognize a biblically based church and avoid those with errors in doctrine, committing abomination, heresy, apostasy, and blasphemy. Many churches are like a poison M&M. They look good, taste good, but they'll kill you spiritually. Like Chronicles 20.20 says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. And the topics are mysticism, new age of the Christian church, the Kundalini spirit warning by Andrew Strom of Australia, new reformation church or kingdom now theology church, Chris Lobb, seeker-friendly, seeker-sensitive church, the emergent church, postmodernism, the G12 Vision Church, Tazi Worship Church, Tangible Kingdom Movement Church, Viserian Siberian Jesus Church, Hyper Grace Movement, Yoga in the Church, 12 topics, 10 DVDs valued at $300, and you can place your order for them now for just a gift of $180. She'll be speaking 9.30 to 10.30 each Sunday through the end of December at the Spirit of Prophecy Church, 2540K Avenue in Plano. That's on the corner of Park and K in Plano. No charge, of course. See you there. In 1980, an angel came to Dimitri Dudeman and told him that it is written in the Bible and that America will be defeated in one hour by Russia. I just made a brand new DVD covering all of the secular real-life proof that Russia really is preparing to do exactly that. Topics are Arise, Devour Much Flesh, Russia and Prophecy, Russia Now Rich and Strong, Russia's Numerous Military Expansions, Ukraine and How It Is Making the Bear Angry, Russia Is Warning the U.S., But We're Not Listening. Russia is building their military, modernizing submarines, aircraft, missiles, and their army while the U.S. is downsizing and filled with traitors and weaknesses. Two and a half hours, gift of $30, go to prophecyclub.com or call 785-266-1112. That's the Russian Bear Rises at prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112. Order today.